Welcome to Growth Mindset Company, where we delve deep into the intricacies of the construction and engineering world, providing you with the knowledge and tools to navigate your projects with confidence. Today, we're embarking on an enlightening journey through the structured and strategic realm of FIDIC contracts. These contracts are the cornerstone of international construction and engineering projects, offering a comprehensive framework that defines roles, responsibilities, and expectations with unmatched clarity. Whether you're a seasoned professional or new to the field, understanding the nuances of FIDIC contracts is essential for ensuring project success and fostering a growth mindset in your professional journey. So, let's dive in and unravel the complexities of FIDIC contracts together, paving the way for more informed decisions and successful project outcomes. Thank you for joining us on this educational adventure. The FIDIC contracts, each designated by a specific color, serve as a cornerstone for defining the contractual relationship in construction and engineering projects worldwide. The Red Book, designed for construction and engineering works where the employer designs the project, the Yellow Book for plant and design build projects where the contractor is responsible for the design, the Silver Book for EPC slash turnkey projects, and the Gold Book for design, build and operate projects, each set forth a framework for various documents critical to the contractual process. These documents include the letter of tender, defined in clauses such as 1.1.1.4 in the red and yellow books, the appendix to tender and schedules, with their specificities laid out in clauses like 1.1.1.9 for the red and yellow books and 1.1.1.7 for the red book respectively, and the specification and employer's requirements, each carefully detailed in clauses such as 1.1.1.5 for the red book and 1.1.1.5 and 1.1.1.3 for the yellow and silver books, respectively. The contractor's proposal and bill of quantities, crucial for outlining the project scope and costs, are referenced in clauses like 1.1.1.7 in the yellow book and 1.1.1.10 for the red book, showcasing the depth and detail fitted contracts delve into to ensure clarity and mutual understanding. Furthermore, Documents like the daywork schedule and schedule of guarantees, clauses 1.1.1.10 in the yellow book for both, delineate the terms for unanticipated work and the guarantees required from the contractor, ensuring comprehensive coverage of potential project aspects. The schedule of payments and schedule of guarantees, outlined in clauses such as 1.1.1.10 for the yellow book and 1.1.1.5 for the silver book, alongside the contract data and schedule of payment currencies, clauses 1.1.1.10 for the yellow book and 1.1.1.9 for the silver book, further underscore the meticulous attention fitted contracts afford to financial and performance aspects of a project. This detailed approach to defining each document, underscored by precise clause references, ensures that the contractual framework is not only comprehensive but also adaptable to the specific needs and conditions of each project. The emphasis on correct document titling and version control, as highlighted through these clauses, is critical for avoiding ambiguity and ensuring that all parties are unequivocally clear on their roles, responsibilities, and expectations within the project's life cycle. What is this table about? This table is like a checklist showing what important papers are included when different types of construction contracts are made using FIDIC guidelines. FIDIC has different rule books, red, MDB, yellow, silver, and gold, each tailored for specific types of construction projects. The table lists the documents that are used to make a complete contract package for each FIDIC book type. Understanding the documents, Contract agreement, if any this is like the formal handshake in writing that seals the deal. In the silver book, it's a standalone document, while in the others, it's bundled with the letter of acceptance. Letter of acceptance, think of this as the you're hired, letter, where the employer says yes to the contractor's offer. In all books except silver, this letter comes with extra notes that might include last minute agreements. Red Book, MDB, Yellow Book, Gold Book, this is defined as being a letter of formal acceptance, signed by the employer, of the letter of tender, including any annexed memoranda comprising agreements between and signed by both parties. Subclause 1.1.1.3, R slash M slash Y, January 1st, 48, G, dot. 
A legally binding agreement will typically be formed on the issue or receipt of the letter of acceptance. Letter of tender slash bid. This is the contractor's job application to the employer, outlining how they'll do the work and at what price. It's very detailed and sometimes includes an appendix to tender or contract data part A, which are like the fine print details of the offer. In the red book, MDB harmonized edition, yellow book, and gold book forms, the letter of tender is a letter from the contractor submitting their offer for the works in response to the employer's invitation to tender. Defined in subclause 1.1.1.4 for red slash MDB slash yellow and January 1st, 49 for gold. For the red and yellow books, the letter of tender is intended to include the completed appendix to tender a critical document identifying many key contract terms. Typically, the employer completes portions of the appendix that require the tenderer's compliance, while the tenderer completes the remaining portions detailing their tender offer. In the MDB Harmonized Edition and Gold Book, the equivalent to the appendix to tender is the contract data, forming part A of the particular conditions. However, the Silver Book does not reference an appendix to tender or equivalent. Instead, the relevant information is intended to be included directly in the particular conditions. Employer's requirements, listed in the yellow, silver, and gold books. This is where the employer spells out what they need, what the project should achieve, and how it should perform. For the gold book, it also includes the rules for running the project after it's built. Appendix to tender slash contract data part A. These are the details about the job's terms and the contractor's offer. They're part of the tender in all books except silver. Memoranda annexed to the letter of acceptance or contract agreement. These are the post-it notes stuck to the job application or contract with extra bits of agreement reached after some back and forth between the employer and the contractor. The FIDIC forms outline that the contract will be formed partly from certain documents submitted by the contractor with the letter of tender, defined as the appendix to tender, red slash yellow books, schedules, red slash MDB slash yellow slash gold books, and contractor's proposal, yellow slash gold books, and partly from other documents provided by the employer in the tender invitation. This approach binds the parties to document versions whose contents were fixed at what may have been an early tender stage. However, it is very common for agreements to be reached between the parties during post-tender negotiations. FIDIC anticipates these agreed items will be recorded in jointly agreed memoranda annexed to the letter of acceptance or contract agreement. These memoranda typically record commercial and technical agreements from the negotiations and may resolve any inconsistencies or ambiguities across the other contract documents. These memoranda are mentioned in all books in the definition of the document forming a binding agreement, the letter of acceptance, red slash MDB slash yellow slash gold books, or contract agreement, silver book. However, only the Silver Books example contract agreement form explicitly identifies these memoranda as part of the contract documents. Conditions of contract, general and particular these are the main rules of the game. They outline what the employer and contractor can and cannot do, and what happens when things change or problems arise. The contract's central elements are the conditions of contract, comprising the general conditions and the particular conditions. These conditions are the principal source outlining the party's rights, obligations, and responsibilities arising from the design, construction, and operation in the gold book of the works. By referencing the other contract documents, the conditions seek to regulate the entire contractual position of the parties. In addition to provisions governing the legal relationship between the parties, the conditions also set out project management procedures and duties, notably the duties of the engineer, red, MDB, and yellow books, or the employer's representative, gold book. The MDB and gold books utilize two-part particular conditions, with part A as the contract data, akin to the appendix to tender, and part B as the specific, MDB, or special, gold, provisions, akin to other forms' particular conditions. Incorporating the contract data into the particular conditions reflects an assumption that this data will be provided by the employer. 
specific design drawings, also only in the red and MDB books. These are the visual plans showing what the finished project should look like. Red Book, MDB. These set out the design of the works and so far as the design is not part of the specification. Again, these are prepared by or on behalf of the employer. Drawings are defined under subclause 1.1.1.6 R slash M as the drawings of the works as included in the contract. This is likely to require a list somewhere in the contract of all the drawings that are included in the contract. It is suggested that such a list could be included in a schedule annexed to the letter of acceptance or contract agreement without affecting the priority of documents under subclause 1.5 which expressly includes the drawings. Employer's requirements listed in the yellow, silver, and gold books. This is where the employer spells out what they need, what the project should achieve, and how it should perform. For the gold book, it also includes the rules for running the project after it's built. In the yellow, silver, and gold book forms, the employer's requirements is the document or collection of documents that specifies the purpose, scope, and or design and or other technical criteria for the works. In the case of the gold book, it covers the execution of the works and the provision of the operation service. The employer's requirements may outline just the performance requirements for the completed works or provide a more detailed design specification. As the name suggests, it is expected that the employer's requirements will be prepared by or on behalf of the employer. The key aspects are that this document sets out the technical requirements and criteria that the works must meet, whether that is through high-level performance specifications or more detailed design instructions. And it originates from the employer outlining what they require the contractor to deliver. Contractor's proposal. This is the contractor saying, here's how I plan to meet your needs. It's included in the yellow and gold books. For the silver book, this proposal is part of the bid. In the yellow and gold book forms, the contractor's proposal is a document expected to contain the contractor's proposed approach for the works. It will typically include either a preliminary design for implementing the employer's requirements or a further development of any outline design specified in the employer's requirements. While not explicitly called the contractor's proposal, an equivalent document containing the contractor's proposals forms part of the definitions in the silver book, see Table 2. So in essence, across these forms, there is an expectation that the contractor will submit a document outlining their proposed methodology, design concepts, and other plans for executing the works in accordance with the employer's requirements. This forms part of the overall suite of contract documents. Design requirement and criteria. This term typically refers to a detailed description of the functional and technical requirements that the project must meet. These requirements and criteria form a foundational part of the project's scope, setting the standards and benchmarks that the completed work must adhere to. In the context of fitted contracts, design requirement and criteria are used to ensure that the contractor's proposals and subsequent works conform to the defined parameters. They serve as a baseline for the design process and are critical during the tendering phase, where contractors submit their proposals based on these outlined requirements. According to the uploaded image, this is included in the yellow and silver books and is also a standard element in the gold book. Feed design, front-end engineering design feed is a phase in the project life cycle that comes after the conceptual design or feasibility study. The feed design focuses on technical work. Contractors, while not explicitly called the contractor's proposal, an equivalent document containing the contractor's proposals forms part of the definitions in the silver book, see table two. So in essence, across these forms, there is an expectation that the contractor will submit a document outlining their proposed methodology, design concepts, and other plans for executing the works in accordance with the employer's requirements. This forms part of the overall suite of contract documents. Schedules. The schedules are defined as those documents entitled schedules, completed by the contractor and submitted with the letter of tender, as included in the contract. Depending on the specific FIDIC book, 
They may include a bill of quantities, data, lists, and schedules of rates and or prices. The various types of schedule. Each book's approach to these schedules varies based on the nature of the contract, reflecting the level of responsibility and risk the contractor is taking on. The MDB, for instance, aligns closely with the Red Book but has been tailored to suit the requirements of international funding agencies. Explanation of the Table Bill of Quantities This is a document that lists the quantities of each element of work that the contractor will perform, typically accompanied by unit prices. It is included in the Red, MDB, and Yellow Books, serving as a basis for payment and helping to define the scope of work schedule of rates and or prices this lists unit prices for items which may be used to price additional works or variations to the contract it is explicitly mentioned in the red and mdb books and is also present in the gold book indicating its relevance to contracts where the contractor is responsible for both the design and construction phases schedule of payments it details the timing and conditions for payments by the employer to the contractor. It's included in all the books except for the Red and MDB books where it's conditional, i.e., if applicable, reflecting that payment schedules may be project-specific. Day Work Schedule This is used for small or unpredictable works that cannot be priced in advance. It provides the rates at which labor, materials, and plant will be charged. It is found in the red, MDB, yellow, and silver books, but not in the gold book. Schedule of guarantees. These are assurances provided by the contractor as a security for the fulfillment of their contractual obligations. It is included in the yellow and gold books, indicating its importance in contracts where the contractor has design responsibilities, yellow book, or also operates the asset, gold book. Performance guarantees. These are specific guarantees related to the contractor's performance to meet contractual obligations. Mentioned with a footnote in the Silver Book, it suggests additional conditions or variations in the guarantees required for turnkey projects. Asset Replacement Schedule This is unique to the Gold Book, which involves design, build and operate contracts. It details the replacement of significant assets during the operation phase, reflecting the long-term responsibilities of the contractor in such contracts. The presence or absence of these schedules in each book aligns with the nature of the contract model the book represents. For example, the red book is for projects where the design is mostly or entirely provided by the employer, hence the comprehensive list of schedules, including the bill of quantities. In contrast, the Silver Book is for turnkey projects where the contractor takes on greater risks and responsibilities, and thus the schedule of payments is explicitly included without a conditional tag. The Gold Book's inclusion of an asset replacement schedule reflects its application to projects with a significant operational component post-construction. Let's turn our focus to the document precedence structure as per FIDIC's standard forms of contracts. We're going to dissect the table displayed here, which succinctly maps out the hierarchy of contractual documents across three distinct FIDIC books, the Red Book, the MDB Harmonized Edition, and the Yellow Book. Now, document precedence is crucial in the event of discrepancies within the contract documents. It establishes which document will override another for interpretation and implementation during the project life cycle. Starting with the first column, for all three FIDIC books, the contract agreement holds the highest authority, if such an agreement exists. This document is essentially the formalization of the contract, capturing all terms, conditions, and appendices in a signed agreement between the parties. Moving on to the second column, we encounter the letter of acceptance. Regardless of the type of FIDIC book, this document secures its position as the second in command. This letter signifies the employer's acceptance of the contractor's offer and paves the way for the contract's execution. As we glide into the third column, the letter of tender emerges as the third most authoritative document. This is the contractor's bid or offer to the employer, detailing the scope and terms under which they agree to execute the works. Now, as we approach the fourth column, the priorities start to differ between the books. 
The Red Book simply lists particular conditions, which are tailored to suit the project's unique requirements. Meanwhile, the MDB version breaks down the particular conditions into two parts. Part A contains specific provisions tailored to the MDB's requirements, whereas Part B houses additional conditions unique to the project. The fifth column presents the general conditions in both the red and yellow books, setting the standard terms of contract. However, the MDB edition places the general conditions a step lower, emphasizing the importance of its particular conditions. In the sixth column, the red book and MDB edition align with the inclusion of specification, a technical document defining quality and standards. But the yellow book diverges, presenting employer's requirements, a document spelling out what the employer expects from the project in meticulous detail. For the seventh column, the red book gives priority to drawings, the visual representation of the project. The MDB edition follows suit with specifications here, reflecting a divergence in priority. Contrastingly, the yellow book introduces schedules, highlighting key project timelines and milestones. The eighth column consolidates the remaining documents in the red and MDB books under schedules and any other documents forming part of the contract. This category serves as a catch-all for any other relevant documents. In the yellow book, we see contractor's proposal at this level, signifying the detailed proposal submitted by the contractor during the bid phase. Finally, in the ninth column, the catch-all category for schedules and other documents repeats for the red and MDB books, signaling a comprehensive inclusion of all remaining contractual documents. The yellow book repeats the eighth priority, likely indicating that all relevant documents have already been covered, or it could be a formatting choice for consistency. In line with what we previously discussed, these priorities dictate the order of reference should any discrepancies arise among the contract documents. It's a vital aspect for ensuring consistency and clarity in the execution of the contract. For the Silver Book, the order is as follows. The first priority is the contract agreement, the primary legal instrument that embodies all terms and conditions agreed upon between the parties. At the second priority, we find the particular conditions which modify the standard FIDIC terms to cater to the specific needs of the project. The third priority features the general conditions, which are the default FIDIC terms and conditions applicable to the contract. Taking the fourth priority spot is the employer's requirements, detailing the technical and functional specifications the employer expects the contractor to fulfill. The fifth priority then lists the tender along with any other documents that form part of the contract, suggesting a bundle of documents related to the tender process. Notably, the Silver Book does not specify documents for the sixth to ninth priorities, which may imply that either there are no additional documents relevant to the hierarchy or that they are to be determined based on the specific contract. For the Gold Book, we see a more extensive breakdown. Like the Silver Book, the first priority is the contract agreement if it exists. The second priority is the letter of acceptance, which is the formal acknowledgement by the employer of the contractor's offer. At the third priority, we have the letter of tender, akin to a proposal from the contractor. The fourth priority introduces particular conditions part of contract data, which likely includes project-specific data that amends the general conditions. The fifth priority consists of particular conditions Part B special provisions, which are additional conditions specific to the contract. The sixth priority presents the general conditions, which is positioned lower compared to the silver book, highlighting the enhanced specificity of the gold book's particular conditions. Employer's requirements take the seventh priority, detailing what the employer requires from the project. The eighth priority is designated for schedules, organizing the timeline and milestones for project delivery. Finally, the ninth priority encompasses the contractor's proposal along with any other documents forming part of the contract, concluding the hierarchy with the original bid proposal. This table supplements our understanding of the FIDIC contractual framework, providing additional clarity to the precedence of documents. It's clear that each book has a slightly different structure, emphasizing the flexibility and adaptability of FIDIC contracts to various project needs and conditions. Continuing our discussion, 
let's delve into Table 3.2, which expands on the hierarchy of contractual documents under Subclause 1.5 across different FIDIC books, red, MDB, yellow, silver, and gold. Firstly, note that this table defines the order in which the documents should be referred to in case of discrepancies. The clarity provided by this precedence is crucial in the smooth administration of construction contracts. Starting with the Red Book, known for its application to building and engineering works designed by the employer. A contract agreement stands at the pinnacle as the signed agreement between the contracting parties. B letter of acceptance is the second highest, which confirms the employer's acceptance of the contractor's offer. C contract negotiation and letter of tender with addenda comes in as the third, encompassing all the negotiations and the initial tender, including any subsequent modifications. Following that, D Particular conditions specify any amendments to the general conditions specific to the project. E. General conditions define the standard FIDIC terms. F. Specification elaborates on the technical requirements and standards of work. G. Drawings provide the visual and technical depiction of the project. Finally, H. Schedules and any other documents forming part of the contract round off the document hierarchy covering the project timelines and any other contract-related documents. Now, examining the MDB variant, which is tailored for use by multilateral development banks. It shares the same initial three priorities as the Red Book, including a contract agreement, B letter of acceptance, and C contract negotiation and letter of tender with addenda, D particular conditions part A and E particular conditions part be follow, dividing the particular conditions into two separate parts for additional clarity and specification. The rest, F, general conditions, G, specification, H, drawings, and I, schedules and any other documents align with the red book in descending order of priority. In the context of the yellow book, which is typically used for plant and design build, the top three priorities mirror the MDB and Red Book. D. Particular conditions follow, not split into parts, providing a singular set of amendments to the general conditions. The E. General conditions and F. Employer's requirements set out the standard terms and the employer's technical and functional specifications. G. Schedules lay out the planned project timeline. The H. Contractor's proposal concludes the document list, including any other contractual documents. Shifting our attention to the Silver Book, suitable for turnkey projects. The Silver Book aligns its initial priorities with the Yellow Book, from the A. Uh, contract Agreement to the C. Contract Negotiation and Letter of Tender with Addenda. At B. Particular Conditions and C general conditions, it specifies the project-specific amendments and the FIDIC standard terms, respectively. Notably, the Silver Book does not detail priorities beyond the D employer's requirements, implying a concise contract document set or the integration of other documents within the listed categories. Lastly, for the Gold Book, which caters to design, build, and operate projects, it matches the Silver Book in the first three priorities, emphasizing the contractual agreement and negotiation documents. D. Particular Conditions Part A and E. Particular Conditions Part B differentiate between general contract data and special provisions, respectively. F. General Conditions and G. Employer's requirements define the core of the contract's terms and the employer's expectations. H. Schedules again lay out the timeline, with I. Contractor's proposal wrapping up the list, including any other documents that form part of the contract. Understanding the order of precedence is critical to resolving potential conflicts between documents. This structure ensures that all parties are on the same page, reducing the likelihood of disputes and fostering a clear path for project execution and delivery. Remember, the specific language and content of these documents can vary greatly depending on the project's location, the nature of the work, and the negotiations between the parties involved. Therefore, while this table provides a solid framework, each project will necessitate a thorough review of the actual documents to understand the precise hierarchy and implications. 
It is also worth mentioning that the absence of certain documents in the Silver Books list beyond the fourth priority doesn't necessarily mean they don't exist or aren't important. It may be indicative of a streamlined set of documents or an integration of various details within the listed documents. In summary, FIDIC's structured approach across different books caters to the diverse nature of construction projects, offering a flexible yet standardized framework. This ensures the right balance between global best practices and the unique needs of individual projects. The FIDIC forms are specifically designed for projects that involve international tender invitations, requiring compliance with certain legal and procedural standards. These standards are particularly pertinent when the project is associated with a public authority or utility, or when it is financed by entities like multilateral development banks MDBs. Such projects often demand competitive tendering as per the procurement policies of the financing institutions or applicable public procurement legislation, ensuring transparency and fairness in the selection process. In the context of FIDIC's structured approach to tendering, the tender documents play a crucial role. These documents, provided by the employer with the invitation to tender, along with the successful tenderer's bid, form the foundation of the contract. FIDIC specifies different sets of documents for inclusion in the tender package across its various guides, as detailed in Table 4. This table lists the documents anticipated to be part of the tender documents, varying across FIDIC's different books. Except for contracts under the MDB form, which require the use of standard tender documents specified by the respective MDB, FIDIC provides guidance on preparing these documents. A comparison between Table 4 and Table 1 reveals that many documents shared with tenderers are intended to eventually become part of the final contract. These include key contractual documents such as the particular conditions, specifications, and employer's requirements. Notably, not all documents shared during the tender phase, such as the invitation letter, instructions to tenderers, and site data, are meant to be contractually binding. Furthermore, the tendering procedure may necessitate modifications to the tender documents. FIDIC accommodates this need through the issuance of addenda, which may include clarifications, revisions, or updates to the documents. These changes could affect various aspects, from procedural details outlined in the instructions to tenderers, like extending tender submission deadlines, to alterations in the content of documents that will form part of the contract. This mechanism ensures the tender process remains adaptable, allowing for necessary adjustments to be made transparently and efficiently, thereby upholding the integrity of the tendering process and the subsequent contractual agreement. When a construction company wants to work on a big project, they need to prepare a special package of documents to show they're a good fit for the job. This package is like a detailed job application and varies slightly depending on the rules set out by FIDIC, an international body that creates standard guidelines for construction projects. Each set of FIDIC rules is named after a different color. Here's what the construction company usually includes in their package. Invitation to tender, it's the document that says, we want to do this project, and here's our plan. Instructions to tenderers, this is a guide on how to make your offer correctly, so it's not rejected for missing details. Letter of tender, think of this as the cover letter of a job application. It's where the company says, here's our official offer to build your project. Appendix to tender, this part includes extra details that support the main offer. Particular conditions, these are special rules that apply just to this project, like wearing safety gear or working certain hours. Securities form, it's a promise that the company will follow through on their offer. Contract agreement form, if they win the bid, this form becomes part of the official contract. General conditions, by ref instead of printing out all the standard rules, which can be a lot, they just say we agree to all the standard FIDIC rules, which everyone already knows. Specifications and drawings, for some projects, they show detailed plans of what they will build. Schedules, this is a timeline showing when each part of the construction will happen. Bill of quantities, it's a shopping list of all the materials they'll need and how much they'll cost. Employer's requirements, this lists what the company hiring them wants to see in the finished project. 
additional information and qualification questionnaire. If there are any other questions the company needs to answer or extra info they need to provide, they'll put it here. Different FIDIC books might require different documents because each project is unique and the rules need to fit the project's specific needs. The company hoping to win the bid must carefully prepare and include all required documents to have a chance at being chosen for the job. In the context of FIDIC's tendering process, Feed Design slash Drawings stands for Front End Engineering Design, which typically involves a detailed project scope, including comprehensive drawings and designs. The inclusion of feed documents in the tender package indicates a thorough preliminary design phase has been completed, providing a clear and detailed visualization of the project's scope for both the tendering parties and the eventual construction phase. Referring to the specifics of Table 4, feed design slash drawings is indicated as a normative component of the tender documents for the RED and MDB books suggesting that these contracts usually require detailed preliminary designs as part of their tendering process. For the Yellow Book, it is a requirement in some cases, but not universally, as indicated by yes slash no. This suggests that the need for fee designs slash drawings in the Yellow Book tenders may be project specific and not a general requirement. The Silver Book does not typically include these in the tender documents, perhaps reflecting its turnkey nature where the detailed design process is likely consolidated post-contract award. The gold book, similar to the yellow book, indicates yes slash no for fee design slash drawings, implying that such detailed designs may be requested based on specific project needs or employer requirements. It's important for bidding companies to note whether fee design slash drawings are required in the tendering process, as these documents can significantly influence the understanding of the project scope, the accuracy of the bid, and the eventual design and construction phases. Well, what did you think about that? Hopefully this video helped demystify some of the key contract terms and clauses we covered. If you feel like you leveled up your construction knowledge, don't forget to smash that like button. Every thumbs up and share helps us reach more people in the industry who are hungry to gain an edge. We're all in this together, so let's keep paying that knowledge forward by spreading the word far and wide. But why stop there? There's always more to learn in this ever-evolving field. So do yourself a favor and subscribe to the Growth Mindset Company channel right now. Then brace yourself, because you're about to get a steady stream of expert insights delivered straight to your feed. Hit that notification bell too, so you'll be the first to know when we drop fresh content. With the latest tips and strategies at your fingertips, you'll be primed to outthink and outperform the competition. The construction world won't know what hit it once you unleash your newfound expertise. What are you waiting for? Like, share, subscribe, your journey to mastery starts now.